Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Sunday, March 3rd, 2024. I hope you are okay. How are you this morning? I hope you are doing well and I hope you are in good spirit. May the Lord continue to be with you. Our reading today, it comes to us from 1 Peter chapter 4 and we will read from verse 12 to 19. It says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happen unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering that when his glory shall be revealed he may be glad also with exceedingly joy. If ye be reproach for the name of Christ, happy are he. For the spirit of glory and of God rested upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matter. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God and this behalf. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God, and if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? For if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinners appear? 19 and last, Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Amen. We give God thanks this morning to read his word and we pray that as we read that we will understand and that we will take comfort as we seek to understand more of his will. Now the reading this morning is saying a lot to us. It says that we must not find it as strange things when we go through trials. I know some of us, we think that trials or difficulties come to destroy us. But let's not think of it like that. And especially if you are serving God. Now, if you are not serving God, I can understand why you think that it comes to destroy you. But if you are serving God, we must not think like that. Because what? God will not ask you to serve him, then destroy you for serving him. Understand? And so when trials come, when we are going through our crucibles, when we are going through difficulties, we must look to him who have experience in these things. Who is him? Jesus, of course, because he suffered. Didn't he suffer? He suffered for the gospel. He suffered for you and I. And so he have experience full on about all of these different afflictions. And so he's much better able to help us because what he knows what we are feeling and he understands. And so if he suffered, we will suffer too because what we are following him. He is our leader. He is our what? Shepherd. And so we must understand that trials come to make us better. It comes to improve us, to help us build on our character, to help refine us and to make us into better people and better Christian. But it says that we must not suffer as a what? Murderer, a thief or an evildoer or what? A busybody. So for those of us who like to be in people's business, the Lord is saying to us, we need to stop it. And for those who practice evil doings, we need to stop it. And if there's anybody that commit murder or thief, we need to stop it. And the truth is that some of us, we murder with our mouth, our tongue. Our tongue need to be in prison for the things that we, we say out of our mouth sometimes. We, we kill people. Might as well we had a knife or a gun because we say something sometimes that it cut deeper than any weapon and i'm talking as christians our mouths sometimes are filthy 
and we can't be following Christ and say that we are doing these things. We need to drop these things. We need to stop these things and get out of people business. People business is people business. And if you are not trying to help the person if they are having a problem, then we need to stay out of it. Now, if a person is saying something to you or you hear something about somebody, you don't have to go and tell Tom, Dick and Harry. Keep it to yourself. And it's not like you have any logical reason for sharing it. It's not like the person need help and you're trying to help. You're just spreading the person name all across town like a news. Tearing down the person's reputation. Destroying the person. For what? You have no rhyme or reason. And God will hold any of us accountable who do that. You understand? We must be kind to each other. We must be helpful. We must think before we speak. And if we have nothing good to say, just keep quiet. It will be much better off for you in the end. Trust me. But if it is a case where you are seeking help for the person, well, by all means, you, you, you can reach out to other person, but be discreet about it. Be, the, the Bible says that what? Whatever you right and do, your left and don't need to know and stuff like that. But if we are just spreading rumors and spreading people name and talking all kind of things about people, gossiping, then we need to keep quiet. And we need to ask God to cleanse our heart because God is going to hold us accountable for that. So when we are experiencing problems in our life because we practice thievery or we commit any kind of murdering act or we are practicing evil or we are gossiping and busybody in other people's business and we are experiencing hardship because of those things, then those things we deserve. Sounds harsh, but it's a repercussion of our action. So when the police come and arrest you, or when your boss fire you because you steal, or whatever the case may be, or people cut you off because you, you keep talking their name and tearing them down, when you are experiencing those things, you, you can't blame anybody but yourself. Do you understand? And so these are not the things that we should be practicing. We should stay away from these things. And the Bible tell us that and warn us that look here, all of us one day would have to face the judgment. In fact, it says that what? Judgment begins with those of us who claim to be the followers of Christ. So it begins at the house of God. And if we scarcely escape, we who say that we are following the principle of God, you know, if we scarcely escape, where will those who don't want anything to do with God, who don't want to repent, who don't want to, 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 to walk in righteousness, where will they end up? What will happen to them? Very serious question and something to think about. And so that is why as Christians, we need to humble ourselves and we need, like David, we, we need to say, Lord, create in me a clean heart and restore in me your spirit so that I can live a life of righteousness. Amen. That is what we are called to do. Live a life that represents Christ, our creator. Be faithful. Commit our souls to God for safekeeping and don't run the risk of leaving it out there to be snatched up by the devil because the devil ain't playing and for those, those of us who love to play dalios with the devil one day the dalios go and burn down and so let us be serious about our walk with god and be serious about our character building let us strive to be better people let us bring a positive vibe to this world and to our community and to our church to the environment that we are associated with let us bring a different color amen because god wants to save all of us all of us he came to die for this world so he didn't come to die for some and didn't come to die for the others and that is why he's going at such extra mile to make sure that we get it right let us get it right with his help amen so may god continue to give you strength and continue to bless us as we seek to serve him and to do what is right amen have a wonderful day